You are welcome to issues about life and religion. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hit that subscribe button. So when you do not allow it to happen, the scriptures actually say, do not defraud one another. So when you do not give yourself to your husband, you do not give yourself to your wife, you are actually being fraudulent. You are, you are, you are, you are committing some form of a, a, a crime or, or, or a sin. Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events and small minds discuss people. I am your host, Kwesi Ado Sampo. You are welcome to issues about life and religion. Hi, I'm Bison. Hey, I'm Nama. Please subscribe now. Please subscribe now. Hello there. This is KAS Media. You are welcome to issues about life and religion series, a weekly podcast where we seek to discuss the impact of our faith and belief system on our life as we seek to understand the meaning of our existence. As Socrates said, great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, and small minds discuss people. As you might be aware, Last August, we celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary, my wife and I, and we renewed our wedding vows among friends and family. And then I decided, upon the prompting of friends, to share my marital experiences. So far, we've had about four videos on many ways or uh, areas of relationship in marriage. And uh, today the question is, um, what are the causes of unfaithfulness, infidelity in marriage? And how can Christians in marriage guard against it? And for to help me discuss this very important topic, our God's choice servants, very dear friends and uh, son and daughter of mine, um, we have in the studio Reverend Derek and Reverend Mrs. Selgeria Agri, Agri Solomon. And they are pastors of Shine Ministries International and they're based in London, UK. I'm happy to welcome you, Sofo Thank you. and Mamu Sofo. Thank, you, Thank you very much, Sadi. Thanks. Um, these great servants of God are great married counselors. Between them, they have written about uh, five books. I do remember very well, Built to Last and uh, God's Pies for Marriage. And also the third one that I remember, let me see if I can remember it. I even did the forward or something, and it is called Keeping the Devil Out of Your Marriage. So you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Please tell us more about the books. All right. Okay. So hello. Uh, yes, we are Pastors Derek and Sel Julia Agri Solomon. We've got these books, uh, God Spices for Marriage, which is about how to make your marriage as exciting and interesting as possible. God did not create marriage to be a boring, uh, 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 t uh, tasteless adventure. So it has to be exciting. And then we have uh, keeping the devil out of your marriage. What do you have to say about that? Keeping the devil out of your marriage is teaches us all the things we need to do to ensure that we have kept, as the title says, we have kept the devil far away from our marriage. Because one of the things he loves to do is to destroy everything that God has created, especially in marriage. So it gives us all the wisdom and knowledge we need to guard our marriage against anything that is not of God. So yeah. we can enjoy our marriage. Yes, and then we have built to last, which is how to build lasting relationships. As Daddy was saying, he has been married for 40 years plus. That, that is something that was built to last. And you know that if you use rotten ingredients to prepare soup, the soup is bound not to taste good. So when you build a relationship that will last, it means that you have 
two quality people in their marriage and with the third person being God, it helps to make this last. And we have the blood of Jesus as well, its power and how to make use of it. And then we have the courtship that leads to marriage for singles, how to prepare yourself and organize yourself so that you don't just frolic around with people, but you, you can order your steps into a good marriage. So these are the books. Like Daddy said, we run the marriage school. The marriage school. So if our, our YouTube handle is the marriage school, or you can just type in the, the marriage school with Pastors Derek and Selgelia Agri Solomon, or you can also check on uh, Facebook, uh, the marriage school with Pastors Derek and Selgelia Agri Solomon. And we have lots of videos that will be helpful for you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, uh, yeah. Pastor Derek and Pastor Selgelia. Thank you. Thank you for honoring me by coming to my studio. Thank you. Um, so the question is, why do people apparently, passionately in love, marry, and then as time goes by, looks like the passion goes off, there is no romance and everything becomes ordinary. Mm. Why does that happen? All right, ladies first. Okay, thank you, Daddy. We're so grateful for this opportunity. And, and we, we will talk about it. It's very true. In the business of marriage, we've seen so many people who are really, like you said, passionately in love. And then suddenly, they don't want to see each other anymore. They want to just um, leave the marriage or just forget about the man or the woman. And I think one of the reasons why there is this loss of passion and romance in the marriage is because we usually don't like to maintain things. Whatever you build, as time goes on, there will be the need for you to maintain it. But most of the time, we don't make time to maintain our marriages. We don't make time to ensure that the love and the romance is still very bubbly. So there are things, as we are growing, as we are living, there are, for instance, pressures of life. When we are in love, we don't have children, we don't have bills to pay, we are living with our parents, we are living probably in the house. We don't, there, there, there's not a lot of responsibilities for us. And then suddenly we get married, and we don't take time to maintain the marriage with the onset of all these things. And so if we are not conscious that, I married to a human being, things will change. There's the person I married is not the same person as we are going. There are experiences, there are life changing events happening to us individually and together. And therefore, we need to take time to maintain the marriage and do the things that will bring the romance and the love back. So, right. what I'm hearing is maintain, 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 maintain. And so, <laughs> maintaining the passion, yes, the love, the yes, romance. Yes. How do I maintain, maintain. it? Okay. That is, love, love is organic. Mm -hmm. It's just like any living thing. When you feed it, it lives and it grows. When you deny it or you starve it, it's, it's, it struggles mm -hmm. and it shrivels and it dies. Okay, so couples must act Actively. And, and feeding is not something that happens on itself or on its own. It's not automatic. It's an active thing. You take steps to buy food or to cook food. You take steps to eat it. In the same way, you have to take steps to actively feed the marriage with the love and the romance that it needs. Knowing that if you don't do it, the marriage is likely to struggle and to die. Yeah. Okay, so what we are learning, ladies and gentlemen, is that we need to maintain the love, the passion, the romance, and then we need, how do we maintain it? By feeding it. Yeah. If we don't feed it, it will shrivel, it will die. So we need to feed it. Now, how do we feed love? Because love is not like a baby. As a baby, <laughs> we know that it will depend on the mother's milk until it grows. Then it learns to eat uh, pop, cocoa, and all the other things. And then it starts eating banku mm. and then those things. Then we're feeding the baby. How do we feed love? You feed love that you buy 
Number one, discernment. You will have to, just like with babies, when babies are hungry, they will cry for you to know they are hungry. Sometimes, even if they don't cry, a mother knows this was, this was the last time this baby was fed. So let me feed it again now. In the same way, you have to know that because love and passion is so important in marriage, when was the last time I touched my wife? When was the last time I kissed my wife? When was the last time we made love? When was the last time I touched her? When was the last time we went to watch a movie? When was the last time we sat down and we just talked about our life? When was the last time we went on holiday? So you yourself will have to know and you have to give yourself times in which to do these things. And then sometimes the marriage itself will cry for that attention. When you realize that it's become so dry, maybe arguments have started coming up constantly. It shows that the love is, is, is uh, drying out. So how do I put it back in? When you meet each other and, and nothing moves you, there's no passion. You talk and all you're talking has now become business, bills, the children, uh, uh, every other thing apart from the two of you. You should design that, no, this marriage is dying. Because when you met at first, there were things you did that drew each, I mean, drew both of you to each other. There were words you used. There were uh, 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 activities you undertook. There, were, there was some special attention you gave to each other. There were phone calls. There were certain words that were used that allowed the attraction to grow so that you decided to marry. And so you have to go back and do the same things you did that brought you together. And, and so uh, it helps. Listeners, go back and do the same thing you used to do. But I have heard people say that um, men are hunters. And as for hunters, they go, they hunt, <laughs> and after they grab whatever they are looking for, yeah. the passion to pursue it is no longer there. If anything at all, the passion is to go and hunt again. Yeah. What do you say about that? Uh, I do not completely agree with it because with hunting, you go, you kill the animal, you bring a dead animal home. It doesn't need further attention. If you go catch any animal that you bring home still alive, you know that there is still work you do on them to keep them alive. If you catch any animal that you want to tame or you want to uh, uh, yeah. rare, you got to feed it every day. You have to do so much to make sure it's alive. In the same way, when you bring a woman into your life, you haven't killed her. Until she is dead, she will need your attention. So you cannot easily compare that with hunting as in hunting. Okay, men out there who were hunters, we need to switch from hunting to catching life, bringing <laughs> home, <laughs> and <rape. laughs> don't, don't kill them while you're together. <laughs> okay, uh, mm. Sally, do you have something to add to what uh, your husband just said? Yes, and I mean, yes, men are hunters like we've heard um, over and over again. But I wouldn't say that women are um, animals or game yeah, yeah. or whatever, Trophies, they, yeah. whatever they go hunting <laughs> for. And therefore, even though they want to be known as hunters, uh -huh. and on behalf of all the women, I want to tell the men that <laughs> you don't <laughs> no, I mean, if, if you bring us home, you, you are yeah. not bringing us home dead, you are bringing us home alive. And because we are not your game or animal or whatever you want to call us, Please take good care of us. Uh, don't treat us like you treat your your dead animal you bring home. Thank you all so much. I believe that you are learning a lot from this very short uh, discussion. I'm telling you that these two people are loaded. So <laughs> we want them to pour everything. <laughs> because for the past about my past four videos it's only me talking oh okay and it's good to have you to bring the flavor <laughs> and not only the romance flavor but also the landing fl uh, flavor <laughs> <laughs> okay so my next question is is the loss of romance and passion the reason why there is infidelity or unfaithfulness in some christian marriages is it because of the loss of passion romance yes that the, the loss of passion and romance is one of the reasons but i wouldn't say it is the only reason yeah there are so many other reasons that will lead to infidelity in marriage obviously when there's no love and 
with us. Human beings are created to, to be loved and to be wanted. And therefore, if you are in a relationship where you don't feel loved and wanted, you consciously or unconsciously want to seek it from somewhere, you want to seek it outside of the marriage. And so even though the, the loss of love and passion and romance is one of the reasons for infidelity, there are other there are other reasons. For instance, the Bible says that he that walks with the wise shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. So if you have a group of friends, for for instance, if you're a husband and you have a group of friends and they keep telling you, oh, once you have a, a farm, you also need to have a garden. And they keep putting it in your head every time, your association. They keep telling you, oh, sometimes they have, we've had instances where they've told their man, you are being silly by being faithful to your wife. You need to explore. There are other women out there. You need to explore. So bad association can also be a cause of um, infidelity in marriage. What you hear is extremely important. And it can easily be influenced by your ear. So if you keep hearing, go out. There's fun outside. There's fun outside. You may be tempted to step out even though there will be love in your marriage. Okay, yeah. so... We have learned that one of the causes of infidelity is um, loss of passion and then loss of romance. But that is not the only thing that can cause unfaithfulness or infidelity in marriage. One is bad association, as Sally has said. I'm sure you have a lot more to add. Yes, Daddy. Uh, lack of the fear of God. Lack of the fear of God. When people do not fear God, they do not see the, the, the seriousness of adultery. They do not see the seriousness of unfaithfulness. And they, they, because they, they have a warped or, or a, a downgraded idea of the consequences of sin. When the Bible says the wages of sin is death, they don't really see it seriously. When you don't fear God, you do not take, you do not take heaven and hell seriously. And so it makes it, you take sin lightly and, and it makes it easy for you to commit adultery. Backsliding is another thing. Sometimes these are Christians who really love the Lord, but you see that over the period, your prayer life goes down, your Bible study goes down. The Bible says that uh, 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 Satan, your adversary, is ro uh, walking about uh, running like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Therefore, is it that uh, be be sober and vigilant okay so if you are not careful with your spiritual activity sometimes you become exposed you become exposed and some temptation can come your way and you do not have the strength to resist it so that one is also there another thing is when you are denied in the marriage we we sometimes we overwork work work and every time when we come home i'm tired i'm tired so there is no romance going on there's no sex going on you tap your wife oh i'm tired i've got a headache or you tap your husband i'm tired i've got a headache as this goes on and on if the hunger is the human beings we were created as sexual beings we have been created as sexual beings. So when you do not allow it to happen, the scriptures actually say, do not defraud one another. So when you do not give yourself to your husband, you do not give yourself to your wife, you are actually being fraudulent. You are, you are, you are, you are committing some form of a, a, a crime or, or, or a sin. Okay, so when you deny your husband or your spouse, there is the tendency that if they don't have self-control, they may give in to temptation out there. You want to add something? Yeah, I want to add to what you are saying. Um, taking it from the denial thing, mm -hmm. it will also lead to offenses. Yeah. And one of the reasons why there is a loss of passion in the marriage is um, unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. That is, there are so many of us who call ourselves Christians, but it's very, very difficult for us to forgive and let go. The Bible says we should forgive one another just as Christ has forgiven us. But most of the time, we don't forgive as Christ has forgiven in our marriages. We forgive it and then when there's a need for us to bring it up, we bring up the, the, the offense. So if we don't let go of offenses, if your husband has offended, your wife has offended, by all means, because you are living together, there's bound to be offenses. But if we don't learn to let go of the offense and we are so hurt and we are so um, bitter. bitter about the offense, you may be tempted to go and seek solace outside of your marriage because there's something blocking. You're not able to flow with your husband. You're not able to flow with your wife. You don't have that joy in the marriage anymore. And therefore, you keep looking outside to find out whether you, you get that joy in the marriage. And if you don't take care, if you don't know how to deal with offenses and bitterness and hurts and pain, it will also lead to 
infidelity in the marriage. Yeah, abuse is another thing, Daddy. Abuse is another thing. Sometimes you have a wife or a husband being abused, and sometimes they run to somebody for comfort. They run to somebody to share their story. And sometimes they are sharing this story, and as they are crying and crying, uh, before you realize things, uh, the, the other party try to comfort, and then the comforting leads to all uh, sorts of other things. The husband, or especially wives, where the husband is the, the, the Sakura of the family, is not giving, is not providing, then this wife now has to maybe contact the, the husband's friend. Oh, your, your, your brother, he's not treating me well. He hasn't given us money for this. He hasn't given us money for that. Oh, come home and get it. Come to the office and get it. Before you realize, it is leading to other things. So sometimes abuse, abuse can also lead to infidelity in, in, in marriage. Daddy, there's, yeah, there's this one complicated one, and that's culture. Culture. Yes, that's culture. All right. And some of our cultures or culture cultural permits practice. culture practice, it permits infidelity. So you see that a man will be committing infidelity in the marriage, and then if let's say the wife reports him, they'll say, Oh, he's a man. And because he's a man, he's allowed or he can. And so instead of the man thinking, No, I am actually going against scripture and causing my wife pain, because he thinks it's your your probably your mother might even tell you, oh your father did it and I stayed and it was okay. Your auntie's husband did it, your uncle did it and it was okay. So don't really bother so much about it. And some of these cultural practices encourage some of these things. And mommy, hey, talking about culture, sorry, daddy. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me come in before yeah. I you keep it, but don't lose it. Yes, daddy. This culture, cultural practice, mm -hmm. yes, is it typically African culture or it is also a Western culture? It's, it's more African than, than Western. It's more African than, you hardly see it in the Western world, but in Africa it is. Yeah, and and I was I was going to add that with a culture thing, it even goes beyond just the person doing it and we just permitting it. There are times where a person is married. Let's say having uh, uh, children is delayed, fruitfulness is delayed, and you see a husband's mother, family members, friends will come and say, "Ah, you are wasting time. Get another woman pregnant yeah. somewhere else." Yeah. There are times where the person is married and family members will come and say, "But you need another wife from your village." <laughs> Let me ask, is it because as Africans, mm. we are polygamous? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, the African culture, culture is polygamous. Culture. It's culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The culture. That yeah. African culture is very polygamous. Yeah. And sometimes it fights why? against the Christian faith. Yes. Yeah. Is that not why even in our law, if you marry traditionally, mm -hmm. the law allows you to marry more than one. Yeah. But if you marry according to the ordinance, yeah. then and you go and marry another person, it's considered sin. Yeah. However, if you marry uh, traditionally, mm. the law even allows you because of our traditional, yeah. our cultural yeah. bias yeah. towards uh, uh, polygamy. Polygamy, yes, daddy. So and culture then, is a. I mean, he says it's always right by saying that the traditions of men have made the word of God of no Yeah. Oh, I I know that when we talk bad about our culture, mm. I know that everywhere there is human, there is a people, a group of people, African, yeah. Western, or wherever, mm. they have their culture. Yeah. And uh, God invasion of humanity mm. shows that every culture is not pristine or yeah. perfect. Yeah. And so when we talk about America or Europe or any of the particular mm. countries, mm. we can point to cultures yeah, or cultural that's practices wrong. that is yeah. contrary to scripture. To scripture. Yeah. yeah. And so the incarnation is God invading the universe. Mm which he created, yeah. which had become polluted because of the entrance of mm. sin, mm. because of our father Abraham, yeah. uh, Adam and Eve. Yeah. Um, every culture has a very positive part and yeah. also very and negative, negative part. part. Yeah. And so when we talk about African culture, it's not that we are just berating no, the culture. No, no, no. But yeah. if you put a Bible there, and look at every culture, whether Chinese or Japanese or mm. American or mm you will see yeah. the positives 
and, and the, the negatives. negatives. Yeah. So the enlightenment in the Christian mind is the word of God appearing yeah. to show the good and then the evil of our culture. Yeah. So that's that is true. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hit that subscribe button. Hi, I'm Bison. Hey, I'm Nama. Please subscribe now. Please subscribe now.